And when it comes to race and gender diversity, and I meet diversity officers, some tell me they're doing real things, some tell me quietly they are fig leaves on the problem. How do you know and what are you doing to make the efforts that you're taking inside your company real rather than gloss? Hi, Steve. Thanks a lot for this question. I think uh, very close to my heart, to be honest. Um, I think um, one way of knowing whether you are able to, to really move the needle is to measure, 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 measure. Um, and I think when I started this role six months ago, um, I think I was very pleased that PMI had decided to put a chief diversity officer into the role, reporting to the CEO directly, which already shows there is the commitment to make change. And I'm, I took the time also the first months and uh, definitely to do a lot of research and figure out what is actually working in this area. And, and I have to say there's more research results available about all the things which are not working than about things which are really moving the needle. But I have no intention whatsoever to do nice to haves. Uh, I read a super nice quote the other day, which said like uh, change is starting when people feel uncomfortable. And that's definitely how I see my role. I think some people have to feel uncomfortable to make a change with regards to inclusion and diversity. Have the recent protests over racial uh, dignity, uh, dignity police brutality, you know, we've had murders in the United States, but honestly, the protests happened all over the world. Ha has this changed at all um, any of the actions you've been taking or your North Star in this issue? Um, I Definitely, the, the, the events in the U.S. had an influence on, on us as a company as well. But I think the issue is even more broader because you can imagine that as an aftermath of coronavirus, uh, we expect that there will be more divisiveness in, the, in our society. And, and I think we started to think very early, like how we can uh, prevent that this is impacting uh, us as a company and that this is disrupting us as a company. So we started to have uh, what we call inclusive conversations with employees on those issues and also have sometimes uncomfortable discussions uh, around th those topics. And race and ethnicity for a global company has always been high on, on our list of priorities. Uh, but I think this pushed the topic even higher up uh, on our agenda. You know, uh, uh, Silky, I had a conversation recently with one of your senior executives um, who has become an out uh, gay man uh, at, at Philip Morris International and talked about that and talked about, you know, how he had largely kept this um, hidden and it, it had come around. This is also part of the diversity picture. And I guess my question is, what are the best practices you found at getting people that don't come pre-packed as fully tolerant, fully open, fully embracing people. How do you move the needle for people who may not have come packaged in the enlightened way that I sense you are? Yeah, that is of course a, a challenge. And um, we measure, or we start measuring actually the inclus inclusiveness of our, of our teams and, and our population. Um, I think one way of getting people is, is clearly raising the awareness because sometimes it's not those people uh, who are the biggest issue who are uh, uh, obviously against uh, um, LGBTQ or, mm -hmm. or who are very openly racist because with them, they are easy to identify. But I think those who are not even aware about the fact that that these minorities are facing severe issues. Um, I think that's where you really have to create awareness and understanding for those issues. Right. And also very important is to create allies and, and inclusion and diversity is there for everybody. It's not only me and my team who take mm. care of inclusion and diversity. Every single employee has to right. take a responsibility and the senior management for sure. Right. And real quick, Soki, I know that you've been focused on International Equal Pay Day. How is that going inside your company? 
Um, we have been last year, and I'm super proud, although this was even before I took the role, uh, that we have been the first company to be globally certified for uh, equal salary. Um, and, and I think this is really an important cornerstone on the way forward to, to gender equality. Uh, and it starts with uh, women getting the same uh, salary for the same work. Right. And more important, I think, it's not only the math which is done. We now know that in all countries around the globe where we are uh, operating, we pay the same uh, uh, salary for the same work. Uh, but it also comes with an external audit where people check the commitment of the management in every single market, um, and they talk to employees, and they follow up on uh, whether right. those commitments which have been made are actually uh, uh, followed up uh, afterwards. And, and that is, a, is an overall very intense process. Mm. Um, and, uh, and we are renewing currently our commitment to this and will start uh, 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 again in, in the coming year.